Welcome to my presentation on the extended trial balance which can be found in the AAT Level 3 Advanced Bookkeeping module. Just a quick introduction to me, I am AAT qualified and completed Levels 2, 3 and 4. I've been working in finance now since 2016 and fulfil my passion for teaching in supporting others through these videos. My aim is to help students understand the key concepts of the AAT course so I have created my own materials to show the way that I learnt. As these materials are my own, I must state I am not endorsed by AAT, simply a former student wanting to help others with their accountancy studies. I hope these are beneficial to you and wish you good luck and success. So let's start by looking at what the extended trial balance is then briefly. So um, the extended trial balance, it moves your ledger balances from your TB into the statement of profit and loss and the statement of financial position. OK, so we're using abbreviations in this just because it's quite long winded, um, but you've got your profit and loss. And the statement of. Whoops, financial. Position. It also makes sure that we take into account any adjustments that have to be made before we can move those balances across. It has debit and credit columns for four sections. And they are what your ledger balances are, what the adjustments are that need to be made, and then the items that will be moved into your statement of profit and loss and your statement of financial position. So it looks something like this. And the key to it all is that it must always balance. So each section, your debits and your credits must balance on every single section. So what goes where? Well, this is going to be a key thing when you're doing your extended trial balance. Um, your income and your expenses are shown in the statement of profit and loss. Your assets and liabilities, capitals and drawings are in the statement of financial position. So this is where we just do a quick review of dead click. Um, I am a very big fan of dead click. It really helped me when I was doing my studies. Um, so I really like to bring everything back to this so that the way of learning and the way of understanding is consistent. And then this can be applied um, whenever you're doing your double entry bookkeeping. So when you're using dead click, if we have a look at where they are, we can see how a balance is going to be a debit or a credit. So if we're looking at our um, income and expenses, we can have a look here and say, well, expenses sits on the debit side. So if we're going to have expenses in our TB, then it's going to be a debit balance. OK, so um, every time we buy something, we're going to be increasing that expenses account by debiting it. If, on the other hand, we are, are going to have our revenue streams, our different income accounts, that's going to be on the credit side. OK, and that's because every time we get more revenue, more money in, we make more sales, then um, our, we are going to be crediting that revenue account. So therefore, the ledger balance on that is going to go up. So your income and expenses are shown in the statement of profit and loss. So then looking at the other things that we've got, then your assets and liabilities. So again, your assets are the things that um, are resources controlled and owned by the company. So they're going to be your fixed assets. That's going to be your bank. It's going to be your petty cash. Um, all of those sorts of things. They sit on the debit side of the statement of financial position. OK, so whenever they increase, we debit those accounts. Um, so they will be on the debit side. And then we've got liabilities. So that's going to be your VAT payable to HMRC. Um, perhaps it will be bank loans. Um, it's going to be your purchase ledger um, control account because you're going to have to pay out those sorts of things. They credit the liability account when we increase them. So that's going to be part of your credit balances in your statement of financial position. Then you're going to have drawings. So when the owner of the business takes money out of the business, 
that's going to debit that account. And then you've got your capital. So when money is introduced into the business, we credit the capital account. So all of those then go into the statement of financial position. So I'm going to take you through an example, a fully worked example, um, but this is just to give you an idea um, to know whether you're going to be having a debit or a credit. And also you need to be able to use this for your adjustments. OK, so you need to know you have to think about your adjustments in terms of what account is it going to be increasing and therefore how is that going to apply to dead click? Because you can always use dead click in terms of the increase that's going to happen to the account. OK, so now I'm going to take you through my step by step approach to how I used to tackle the extended trial balance questions. So step one. So step one is all about understanding what you're given in the question. And by this, I mean reviewing the ledger accounts that you're given, deciding whether they belong on the profit or loss or the statement of financial position. And having a look at the balance to see what it tells you about the account. Now, the reason that I include that part is because sometimes there are a few accounts that can be included to make you think that little bit more. One of the classics being a bank account. Now, a bank account can, in theory, be a debit or a credit balance on the statement of financial position. And that will all depend on whether it's currently overdrawn or not. OK, so if you've got your normal bank account, you've got £10,000 worth of cash sitting in that bank account, um, then it's an asset to the company. OK, so that's where you can say, OK, well, this is now an asset to the company. Therefore, it will be on the debit side of the statement of financial position. However, if that bank account is overdrawn, then it means that that account is actually a liability because the bank is going to want that money back at some point. OK, so that then changes that and it's no longer an asset to the company. It's actually a liability of the company. So therefore, it would actually sit on the credit side of the statement of financial position. So that's why I include that just that little extra little bit there is have a look at the balances and what do they tell you about the account? Step two, then, is review the additional information provided in the question. So by this, you will be given ledger balances, but you will also be given some additional information um, which will then tell you what adjustments are going to be required whilst you're doing your um, extended trial balance. OK, while you're doing this, again, use your dead click, understand what the adjustments are, understand the effect on the accounts that you're going to have and then complete the adjustments section. Once you've done that and you know what your adjustments are and you can and you can actually explain it, talk yourself through it. Then you can move on to starting to complete the extended trial balance for the accounts. But the first one in step three, I always do it without the adjustments. So effectively, you're doing the easy ones first. So for any account that you haven't got anything in the adjustment column, move your ledger balances into the re relevant debit or credit column in the profit or loss or the statement of financial position. OK, so use your dead click, identify what is going to go where and whether it's going to be a debit or a credit balance and move those ledger balances across. OK, for anything that don't have adjustments. Then step four is work out the balances for the accounts that actually need the adjustments. So you're going to have a handful of accounts in the exam that you're going to have to do adjustments for. So using the information that you calculated in step two, you now need to apply those adjustments to each ledger account that they affect, and that will produce your final balances. Now, be careful here, because this is where you need to make sure you've put your adjustments in the correct debit or credit column. So this is where you need to use your dead click to identify whether the adjustment you're making is going to increase or decrease an account. And therefore, you apply the correct debit or credit entry. If you've got a, um, for example, if you have a bank account um, that is an asset, it's in credit. So you've got um, £10,000 in your bank account. 
but the adjustment you need to make to that account is £100 less because you had to pay out for something or you, you've made an adjustment and a correction based on the information in the question, you're going to end up crediting it because you're going to want to reduce the balance. But your balance actually remains a debit. OK, so we'll go through it on, on the next few slides as a whole worked example. Um, but just remember, when you're doing your adjustments, are they a debit? Are they a credit? How will it affect the account? And explain it to yourself, especially while you're in practice mode. Explain everything to yourself. Talk to yourself. Make sure you understand it all. And then finally, step five is check everything balances. All sections must balance. If they don't, there is a mistake in the ETB, so review them carefully line by line. So if you do have a mistake, take a look back, have a look at each line. Does what you've put down make sense? Have you accidentally written something in a debit and it should be a credit? Go back and review them all, starting with the accounts with the adjustments. Review all of your accounts. Have you moved all the balances over correctly? So now we've got our step by step process, we're going to go on on the next slides and do a fully worked example for you. OK, so now let's look at a example. So I'm going to bring some information up on screen and then we'll work through it um, step by step. OK, so first of all, you're a trainee accountant working on the accounts for a client. The trial balance has been drawn up and you need to make some adjustments for the year ending 30th of June. An extract of the trial balance is provided below along with further information related to the corrections required. OK, so first of all, I've just pulled this together. It's just an example um, and the adjustments that I've put down are just things that um, have come up. Now, you can have all different types of adjustments. You might have adjustments including accruals and prepayments. Um, you might have adjustments that you need to do uh, related to the bank. Um, all sorts of things can come up. So make sure when you're doing it, you are using your um, knowledge and your understanding of the information um, and don't just sort of base it on um, what what I've put down here. These are just a few examples of things that might come up. OK, so here then, first of all, we can see that we've got all of our ledger balances um, and then we've got our columns blank for our adjustments. So the first thing I would do is I would actually go down um, the ledger accounts here and I would have a look and say to myself, OK, so where am I expecting these to um, to, to be? Are they going to be shown on the statement of profit and loss or are they going to be shown on the statement of financial position? So what I would do is I would just work my way down and I would say, OK, so the opening inventory, the opening inventory is going to form part of our cost of sales. OK, so that's going to be on our profit and loss. Our closing inventory. Now, closing inventory is a funny one because actually it shows on both. And the reason it shows on both is that because the closing inventory forms part of our cost of sales, but it also then gives us the figure of what our inventory is at the end of that period and therefore is also an asset to the company. OK, so um, this one will actually show on both. But it will have a, a different credit or debit balance depending on which one is sitting on. So your purchases, well, these um, are going to be your expenses. So these are the things that you've bought um, as part of your cost of sales. So that is going to be on your profit and loss. Your revenue will be your profit and loss. And then you've got your expense accounts here. So you've got your profit and loss for your rent and rates, utilities. So all of your expense accounts. And then you've got interest received. So this is like an income. OK, so this is the bank saying, oh, look, you've got money in your bank. We're going to pay you interest on it. OK, so again, that's going to be on your profit or loss. Then your computer cost and your computer depreciation. So computers are an asset. So your assets sit on the statement of financial position. Your sales ledger control account. That's your debtors, that's your customers. So that's going to be your statement of financial position because they're an asset to the business. Your bank account, we can see. We can see that it's a, a debit balance of 15,230. So if it's a debit balance, we know that it must be an asset. So it sits on the statement of financial position. Your cash, so that's your petty cash, you know, your tin that you've got in the, the office manager's drawer, that kind of thing. Um, 
So that's going to be on your statement of financial position because that's an asset as well. Your capital account and your drawings, both of those are on the statement of financial position. Your bank loan is your liability, so that will be on your statement of financial position. And then your purchase ledger control account is your liability. The VAT account here is a liability because it's a credit balance. And then you're going to have your allowance for doubtful debts. Now, your allowance for doubtful debts um, will always show in total on the um, statement of financial position. But the adjustment is actually going to be either treated as an expense or a sort of income to the to the um, company. OK, we'll, we'll go through that shortly. Um, so this bit will actually appear on the profit or loss. But it's going to affect the line above there for the um, allowance for doubtful debts. And then your de depreciation charge is also going to be a part of your profit and loss. So that's the first thing I would do is I would go through and actually identify where do all of these sit. Then we can have a look at what else we're given. So I'm going to bring up the dead click in the top right hand corner here. And then we can use it while we're going through the adjustments that we're going to need to be made. OK, so the first one, which is a um, sort of fairly straightforward one, is about the closing inventory. So we're told that at the end of this year, our closing inventory has been valued at £14,005. So we know, as we've just gone through, that our closing inventory is going to have both a debit and a credit adjustment. Because at the moment, we haven't got a closing inventory on our ledger balances. We need to enter it. So for the adjustment, we simply need to write in both of these columns, we simply need to write that we're going to have both a debit and a credit adjustment to make. And one of those will appear on the financial position and one of those will appear on the profit and loss, which we'll go through when we come on to the next slide. Moving on to the second one then. An electricity invoice for £250 was incorrectly posted to the rent and rates account. OK, so we've got miss posting here, so we're going to have to make an adjustment to the accounts. So it was an electricity invoice. So this should be under our utilities. It's £250 and we know that it's gone to our rent and rates account by accident. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to say, OK, we're going to have to take it out of our rent and rates account because that's incorrect. So because our rent and rates is an expenses account, because we want to reduce it, we're not actually going to be increasing the account. So therefore, we're actually going to credit the account. So on our rent and rates, we're going to have a 200 a £50 adjustment in the credit column. But then we also need to do the other side of that. So we know that our electricity is a utility. We're going to increase it. So therefore, it's going to be a debit. So there's our £250 adjustment going in and out there. So we can see the debit and the credit. We're then told that we've got a customer who's owing £40 and it's unlikely to pay. So this means that our allowance for doubtful debts, we're going to have to add on £40 to this. So we've got a customer who, um, for whatever reason, is not going to pay us this £40 that they owe us. And therefore, we have to allow for that in the accounts. So the way to think about this is that because a customer is owing us £40 and we're not going to get it, Effectively, we're going to lose that money, so it's going to be an expense to the business. So the adjustment for doubtful debts that you're going to need to make is going to be an expense and therefore we're going to be increasing it. So what we're going to have to do is put our expense amount into the P&L, which is our adjustment here. But then we're also going to have to add it onto the liability that we have in the statement of financial position for doubtful debts. So that is going to be our other side. We're going to then credit our allowance for doubtful debts. So just taking that back then, 
you've got your allowance of £40 because that customer is not going to pay, that is going to increase that allowance for doubtful debts. When we know customers aren't going to pay us or we suspect that they're not going to pay us, we have to put that and show that in the statement of financial position. And that becomes a liability to the company. So that's why that's on the credit side, because we're increasing that liability. So our liability, if we look at our dead click over here, our liability is here. We're going to increase it. Therefore, it's a credit. But the profit and loss side of that is the actual adjustment amount that goes through. And that's treated like an expense to the business because it's increasing. We're treating it like an expense. If, on the other hand, there was a customer who then did come true and they were actually going to pay us money that we'd already written off or that we'd already said mm, we don't think we're going to get that, we'd actually treat that as kind of like a form of an income. So that would then be the opposite way round. But in this example, you can see that it's um, a £40 um, expense to the business because we are increasing our allowance for doubtful debts. And then the final one here is we're just talking about depreciation. Now, I've just put a figure down here for depreciation as an example. So our depreciation charge is going to be sitting on our purchase on our sorry, on our profit and loss. OK, so our depreciation charge is an expense. So that's going to be a debit in the profit and loss. But don't forget our other side to this is going to be in our accumulated depreciation and our accumulated depreciation is sitting on the statement of financial position here. And that's the other side of your double entry. So when you're doing your adjustments, make sure that you've got a double side to each one that you are doing and you know why. Talk yourself through it. Then at the bottom here, you would just total it up so that you know that you definitely balance. And these would come down to 16,920. So this is when you've made your adjustments. Now in the exam, I believe that the exam format, I believe has changed a couple of times um, in how these questions are done. Um, in the exam, I think you get one task where you have to work out the adjustments and then you get a separate task where you then you're given um, adjustments and ledger balances and you have to extend it to the extended trial balance. Now, um, obviously you, won't necessarily do it all the way through, but I'm going to use the same example on my next slide to do the next part of the process so that you can see it all working all the way through. Just bear in mind in your exam, this may not be the case. You may actually be given a different set of information um, depending on what part of the exam that you're doing. So we'll move on and we'll carry this through and extend it all the way through in just a second. OK, so I'm going to bring the information up again then. You can see here that I've put the adjustments in. I've typed them in so they're nice and easy for us to see. And I'm going to put our dead click up in the corner there as well. So before we start, I'm just going to go through and we're just going to very briefly talk through what sits on what side, uh, on what statement. So what goes on the profit and loss and what goes on the financial position. OK, so first of all, we're going to have our statement of profit and loss, and that's going to have all of our expenses. And all of our income. And then our statement of financial position is going to have our assets. Our liabilities. Our capital and our drawings. So running down the side here, let's have a look at what accounts we're given. So our um, opening and closing inventory is going to form part of our cost of sales. And our closing inventory will also be our asset account as well. So then we've got purchases. Which is an expense account, revenue, whoops, reading one line too fast there, revenue is our income account, rent and rates will be an expense account, 
utilities, is expenses, administration, is expenses, and then our interest received is treated as an income account. Our computer cost is an asset account. Our accumulated depreciation, well, that's going to be a form of liability account because that's going to reduce the value of our computer. OK, so the computers that we've got as our assets, the accumulated depreciation will reduce the value of that. Our sales ledger control account, that's our customers. So that's the asset. That's the money we're expecting to get from our customers. Our bank account, well, our bank account, we're given a debit balance. So therefore, it must be an asset to us. But like I was saying a few slides ago, sometimes you may be given a credit balance on that, in which case it would be a liability because it shows that it's overdrawn. OK, so just be very careful on the bank account. Is it a debit balance? Is it a credit balance? What does that tell you about that account? Your cash account, so that's your petty cash, you know, your tin in a drawer, which will be an asset. Um, your capital account is exactly that. Your drawings account is exactly that. Your bank loan, that's a liability. Your purchase as a control account is also a liability. So that's going to be the money that you owe to your suppliers. And once again, let's have a look at the VAT account. Now, the VAT account has got a credit balance. We're told it's got a credit balance. So that means it's going to be a liability to us. And the reason for that is that that means we owe HMRC the VAT. OK, sometimes you might have a VAT account with a debit balance and that's absolutely OK as well. All it means is that HMRC um, owes you money. OK, so again, have a look and decide if it's a credit balance, it's going to be a liability because you owe that money. If it's a debit balance, it's actually treated a little bit like an asset um, because you are owed that money, just like you are with your sales ledger control account. Then your allowance for doubtful debts is going to be a liability account because that's the money that you don't think you're going to be getting in anymore. And then your allowance for doubtful debts adjustment is treated as an expense account um, because that's the money that you're effectively going to be taking away from the business. Um, or it could potentially be an income account. It's better to think of it as an expense account, which I'll go through when we come to do the adjustment. And then our depreciation charge is another expense to the business. So now let's just go through and identify where they sit. So our statement of profit and loss has all of our expenses and our income. So our cost of sales is going to be part of our um, statement of profit and loss because our cost of sales is, is how much it is to make our, our product or put our service out there. So we're going to have our opening inventory on our profit and loss. We're going to also have our closing inventory on our profit and loss. And then we're going to have all of our expenses and income accounts. And we're going to have our allowance for doubtful debts adjustment and the depreciation charge. So then our statement of financial position has our assets, our liabilities, our capital and our drawings. So we're also going to have our closing inventory on our um, statement of financial position because that's going to give us how much, our, how much inventory we have left at the period. So therefore inventory is an asset. We're going to have our computers and the accumulated depreciation, so the asset cost, how much of value at cost was our assets worth, and then how much um, depreciation has occurred so far in total. Our sales edge of control, our bank, our cash, capitals, drawings, and we've got our bank loan, purchase edge of control account, and our VAT as our liabilities there. And then we've also got our allowance for doubtful debts as well. So already you can now see where things are going to be sitting. So let's look at all of the lines that don't have an adjustment. And when you're doing this, it is simply a case of if there's no adjustment to be made and you've got a debit balance, 
then you're going to have a debit balance in either statement, depending on where it's going to be sitting. OK, so for that, let's have a look at um, let's bring the pen up. Let's have a look at the opening inventory. So we've got a debit balance. We've just been through and identified that because it's part of our cost of sales, it's going to show on our profit and loss. So you can see the yellow highlighter there to, to indicate where things go. So because we've got a debit balance, we then put that as a debit balance on our profit and loss. Let's um, leave closed inventory for a second because it's got a, a, an adjustment and then simply work your way through. So we've got a debit balance on our purchases. That's our expense. That's going to go on our statement of profit and loss. Then we've got our revenue, which is our income. So that's our statement of profit and loss. We'll leave the next two ones out for a second because they've got an adjustment. Your administration expenses. Going to move that debit balance over to the statement of profit and loss and then you've got your interest received so that's also going to be an income so therefore on your profit and loss now we've got our computer cost so our computer cost is an asset we can see there we've highlighted it in green so that's going to be our statement of financial position it's an asset to the business so again we just move that debit balance over we'll come back to the depreciation in a minute then we've got our sales ledger control account, which is our asset. Then we've got our bank account. And we've got our cash account. Then moving on, we've got our capitals followed by our drawings. So again, they both sit on our statement of financial positions. So we're literally just moving those figures across. The bank loan is a liability. So is the purchase edge control account. And so is our VAT account. That's what we owe to HMRC. We'll come back to the allowance for doubtful debts in a second and we'll deal with the depreciation charge in just a second as well. So it's really good to have a look here and work out where do these accounts actually sit. So immediately we've gone, OK, there's a debit balance of opening inventory. It's part of our cost of sales, which sits on our statement of profit and loss. So therefore, that debit there gets picked up and put straight onto our profit and loss. So for every every ledger account that doesn't have anything in the adjustments, work out which statement is it going to be sitting on? Is it going to be the profit and loss or the statement of financial position? Once you've done that, if it doesn't have an adjustment, you're simply going to be moving the balances over. OK. Once you've done that, you can then come back and look at the adjustments, because if there is going to be an error in your um, trial balance, the chances are it's going to be where you've made an adjustment unless you've transposed some numbers as you've been copying across. The chances are the um, error will be in the adjustment that you've made. So working through our adjustments then. So our closing inventory. Now we've already um, decided that our closing inventory is going to form part of both of our profit and loss and our statement of financial position. So looking at the asset quality of the inventory of the closing inventory so a closing inventory tells us how much stock we've got left at the end of that period so that is always going to be an asset to the business the asset is going to appear on the statement of profit and loss uh, statement of financial position i beg your pardon i was looking at the wrong one then statement of financial position so we've got our asset here so therefore we're going to have our debit balance sitting on our statement of financial position and our credit balance sitting on our statement of profit and loss because it forms part of our cost of sales. So for closing inventory, you will always have a debit and a credit balance 
and one of them will the debit balance will sit on the statement of financial position as an asset and the credit balance will sit on the statement of profit and loss as part of your cost of sales calculation. Next then, we've got our rent and rates in our utilities. So this was the one, if you remember from the previous slide, something had been posted to rent and rates um, when it should have been posted to the utilities account. It had a value of £250. So we can see that we've done our adjustment here. So now we need to have a look. We've got an £8,000 debit balance of rent and rates. And then we've got a credit of 250. So because we're reducing that, we then need to um, take that £250 off of that £8,000. So because it's a debit and then a credit, we need to find the difference between the two. And we're left with a balance of £7,750. And that is a debit balance because it's an expense account and it sits on the statement of profit and loss. Then similarly with the utilities account, We've got our debit balance here of 1,750, but we've also got a debit adjustment here of 250. So because we've got two lots of debits, we're going to add them together. And there's our new debit balance of 2,000 for that account. So then we're going to have a look now at our depreciation. So going down to the very bottom here, we've got a depreciation charge. So our depreciation charge is just our expense in the year for depreciation. So our expense is going to show on the statement of profit and loss. So that's going to be our debit on the statement of profit and loss. And now we're going to have a look. So our accumulated depreciation, which shows on our statement of financial position. We've already got a ledger balance of 6,000. But this time, because it is a credit balance and our adjustment here, which is our additional charge, a credit balance, we're going to add those two together. And when we add those two together, we get our new accumulated depreciation. So up until the start of this year, our accumulated depreciation was 6,000. The, the depreciation charge, so our expense in the year, was 2,625. So therefore, on our statement of financial position, our accumulated depreciation charge is going to be 8,625 pounds. So there you can see that you've got your debit and your credit. You've got your debit there for your depreciation charge and you've got your credit there as your um, adjustment to your accumulated depreciation. So we've simply gone, OK, this is an expense account. So we're going to move that over to there. And then we're going to add these together. So we're going to add both of those together and put that on our statement of profit, uh, statement of financial position. So finally, then we then come to our um, allowance for doubtful debts. So our allowance for doubtful debts. So let's look at the adjustment part of it first. So our adjustment is that we're going to have to increase it by £40 because we're told that customer owes us £40 and we don't think we're going to be getting it back. So the expense in the year of that adjustment is £40. So that is going to show on our statement of profit and loss. And because it's an expense, it's going to be our debit. So we're simply moving that across to our statement of profit and loss. And again, just like we've done with our accumulated depreciation, because we've got our balance here of 650, which is our credit balance, which is our liability. We've also got a credit balance here which is the adjustment that needs to be made because we need to increase that liability. So back up our dead click here, there's our liability. We're going to increase it, so therefore it's a credit. And then when we add those two together, that will then sit as a credit balance of 690 on our statement of financial position. So That's now our new allowance at the end of that year. So at the end of the previous year, it was £650. During the course of the year, we've been made aware this customer who owes us £40 
isn't going to pay us. So therefore, our allowance then has to increase to £690. So then when you uh, add all of those up, we will then get for one four three five and then you will have fifty eight four and there's your extended trial balance so just as a recap then all of these at the bottom must balance. Anything that is an expense or income shows on your statement of profit and loss and your assets, liabilities, capital and drawing all show on your statement of financial position. So my first step is to always go through and identify the accounts, look at what the accounts are telling me. What is that? Is, is the bank an asset or is it a liability? Is it a debit or a credit balance? Have a look at all of the accounts and identify profit or loss or financial position. Then have a look at the ones that don't have any adjustments in. So forget about the adjustments to start with and just move your ledger balances over to the relevant statement. Then go back and have a look at the lines with an adjustment and just bear in mind that your closing inventory will show on both statements. Then as you do that, work down, have a look at the balance, does it increase or decrease it and therefore then put the new balance on the relevant statement. So hopefully that shows you how to kind of work through it all. Um, take it step by step, line by line, what are the accounts, what type of account are they? Um, there is also another video on my YouTube channel um, about type of accounts, which you may find interesting and also run on double entry bookkeeping, which will also support your understanding of debits and credits. So my final thoughts then for this presentation, identify the types of accounts you are given. Use the dead click to identify whether the adjustments are going to be a debit or a credit. Identify whether the new balance post adjustments belong on the finance, statement of financial position or the statement of profit and loss based on their account type. And check everything balances. OK, so if something doesn't balance, the likelihood is the um, adjustment is going to be wrong somewhere unless you've transposed accidentally while typing in or writing the figures. And ultimately, practice makes perfect with this. It does get quite frustrating sometimes. I've been there, I've done that. I've wanted to tear things up with this as well. Um, but all I can say is step by step. And if you really, really are struggling, you need to take a break from it, walk away from it, maybe do something different, maybe do something you're confident with just to build your confidence back up and enjoy studying again and then come back to it. So keep practicing and I wish you all the very best of luck.